along the tourism theme, um, we're going to have a panel, and it's my pleasure to introduce Ryan Bickle from Blank Park Zoo, Michelle Schickler, Schlicker, I'll get it yet, from Sea Des Moines, Jessica O'Reilly from Travel Iowa, and Aaron Steinman from Silos and Smokestacks. Um, I'm Michelle Schlicker, as she said. I'm with the C. Des Moines uh, Twitter uh, account. Um, but our name is Greater Des Moines Convention Visitors Bureau, and what we do is bring conventions and events into Des Moines uh, to uh, have their event here, um, sporting events, uh, anything from World Pork Expo to uh, American Quilter Society, uh, you may have seen them in Des Moines uh, over the past year. Um, we ran a campaign uh, about a year ago, which was the 100 Fun Things to See and Do in Des Moines. And we promoted that through e-blasts and um, a few other ways, but really what helped make that such a successful uh, campaign was the amount of exposure that we got through Twitter and Facebook and people um, forwarding that uh, microsite that we created on. And um, that, that was one of the ways that we really uh, reached out to the travel industry. Um, and most of the groups that we work with, they don't have a lot of time to uh, really get into the social media. Uh, some of them don't know really what, what they want to do or who to get it out to. Uh, so we provide a way for them to uh, reach out to locals here and attendees of their event. Um, a lot of the things that might be happening with their events, such as uh, traffic things, um, when Goldwing uh, Road Riders Association came into town, they had a lot of traffic uh, things that needed to be notified to the public, and we helped with that, getting the word out. Um, so really, uh, we usually use uh, social media as a way to just get the word out for what they are really wanting to uh, communicate and give their group awareness and uh, let uh, people downtown know what's going on um, with those groups. So um, I'll pass the microphone on to Jessica uh, and just leave you with the fact that we use social media kind of as an icing on the cake and um, to go along with all of the other uh, avenues that we're using to market to them. Um, as Deb said, I'm with the Iowa Tourism Office at Travel underscore Iowa. And while we love talking to travelers, I've also found that Twitter is a great resource to reach out to travel writers or bloggers. We've helped bloggers who were coming through. They're actually on their way to Chicago, but they were tweeting, we're going through Iowa, where should we go? So we were helping them with suggestions. But my favorite example at the moment is um, Chris Faust, who used to be the travel editor at USA Today. She's now a freelance writer. She uh, sent me a tweet and said, hey, I'm happy to come back. Her husband is from Atlantic, and he was back for his high school reunion. She said, what should we see? I said, oh, you have to eat pie at the farmer's kitchen in Atlantic because it's a national pie championship winner. And so they came for the uh, reunion. She blogged about it on her personal blog. They went to, they had pie. She mentioned the tourism office as having given her the suggestion. Her blog post was picked up by the Huffington Post, which then gave us even greater exposure and a little more elevation to Iowa as a um, destination. So that's kind of how we use social media. I'm Ryan Bickle with the Blank Park Zoo, and one of the ways we use social media heavily is YouTube. And we haven't heard a lot about YouTube, but don't forget about it. It's an awesome way to get your story out. The one thing you need to learn about YouTube is just be unique. Come up with unique content. One of the things we had on YouTube for the longest time, the only thing on the web was, what sound does a giraffe make? And believe it or not, giraffes do make sounds. And I had a tape of a giraffe making that sound. So we put a, a, a video together about that. The other thing we've done is we've done different parodies. Now, last fall, it seems like in, a century ago, um, there was an election, and there were all sorts of campaign ads, and they were nasty campaign, campaign ads. And uh, they were talking about things like heated sidewalks. Well, it just so happens that our lions have heated rocks. So what we did was we put together a nasty campaign ad where Kavacha the tiger challenged Cha-Cha the lion for the title of king of the jungle. 
Well, we released that on YouTube, and the news media picked that up, and we poor nonprofits don't have a chance to get mainstream exposure that often. But on Election Day, there were several TV stations around the state that played that spot all about the zoo, giving us tons of exposure. And if you want some more tips, go to blankparkzoo.com slash 140, and you'll get my YouTube uh, tips as well as a few of our videos. All right. Well, as Deb said, I'm with Silos and Smokestacks. It's actually uh, Silos and Smokestacks National Heritage Area. And uh, we're actually a 37-county region in northeast Iowa that helps preserve the sort of American agriculture. I could spend my whole time going into exactly what we do, but follow us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash SSNHA, and you can find out more. Um, one project we worked on, we're also a nonprofit, was a number of years ago we were starting a photo contest. And we had $50 to promote the whole thing, so it's like, how do we connect with uh, people? How do we get photographers? Well, I looked around. I mean, I really ended up going with uh, looking at Flickr, which I don't know, uh, I haven't heard a whole lot of talk about today, but really there was already communities out there, and just building on that community, we ended up uh, the first year with about 150 uh, photos submitted. But, uh, that was four years ago. This year we ended up, uh, we're up to 500 photos plus submitted from uh, people throughout, uh, not just Iowa, but uh, I think eight or nine different states. We've had people submit photos from the heritage area of uh, our partner sites, which range from farms, wineries, uh, uh, historic sites, museums. So that was one part. Then the second part, we really wanted to engage um, all of our visitors and all of our Facebook uh, fan base that we were building. So we decided we'd let them vote on the best of show for the, the photo contest and let them decide and put the uh, results up live and let them follow it. So that really, uh, we ended up with a few thousand people voting throughout that, uh, that one week of voting. And it's just really about engaging our um, our uh, followers and getting them involved and in, because uh, as more of like a CVB I mean with uh, we don't actually have something people can come and visit they can come and visit our partner sites so we have to work with our partners and so I don't know are any questions We beg and plead. <laughs> um, you know, we send out an email to the industry and say, here's what we have for your listing. Please update it. Make sure we have correct information. Um, we go to the CVBs and say, are there new hotels? Are there new attractions? Are there new events that we need to be aware of to get up on the website? And then it is sometimes pulling teeth to get them on there. But we do our best to keep them up to date and current and so that the traveler can have the most up to date information when they're making their plans. You just caught me at a good time. <laughs> we try, we try, we try our best, but yeah, it, it depends, uh, time of day, you know, um, just happen to be there and see that right then, so <laughs> I'm glad I could help. <laughs> yep, we, yep, um, 
we have a few, you know, a few things set up so that we get notified. Um, but really, yeah, it's just kind of about looking for what you need to be looking for and knowing what that is. So. Um, we've just got we've got a subscribe page on our website, so if you just go to the home page, um, we've got tons of different newsletters you can sign up for. Whether you're a group travel person or a uh, sports person, we're going to be adding that in the next week. So, um, yeah, just go there. Right now, ours is more um, the one that we have is tourism industry sort of targeted, and it's under the travel industry information section of our website. But we were are working on developing a consumer e-newsletter, so visit traveliowa.com and watch for that. Blankparkzoo.com, facebookcom slash zoo, youtubecom slash zoo, twittercom slash zoo, and and twittercom slash chacha the lion. Um, yeah, there should be a link on our Facebook page if, uh, if you're following us. Otherwise, uh, silosandsmokestacks.org, all spelled out, and just go to uh, sign up for email updates. And we also have a number of uh, email newsletters, some of them more technical assistance, and then other traveler-based. So. 